Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to continue to look at solving algebraic uh, equations, and these are two-step equations. Uh, in this particular lesson, what you're going to notice is we are finally going to be dealing with questions that have brackets in them, okay? And we'll talk about how that's important and how that relates to uh, solving these using opposite operations. So first of all, and again, copy these down if you're my students. Uh, this will only pay off in the long run, as these are always the rules of how we solve uh, with algebraic equations. So rule number one is we want to isolate the variable. Rule number two is what we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other. Rule number three is <clears throat> that opposite operation, so if we want to undo an operation we have to perform the opposite operation. Uh, the opposite operations undo each other. So addition is opposite of subtraction, uh, multiplication is opposite of division, and so on and so forth. And finally, the last rule is the way that we perform opposite operations is in the reverse order of operations. And that's going to be interesting today because we're going to notice that we do the opposite of the brackets last. So in this particular case, let's look at a few questions. And again, you may want to pause this to write it down. Uh, take your time getting it down and focusing on kind of what the important things are uh, as we're working through these equations. So if we look at question number one, I already know that the answer is 4. Okay? So let me just prove to you that the answer is 4. And uh, don't write this part down, but I know that 3 times 4 minus 2 is equal to 6, because if we do the brackets, this is 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So your answer is absolutely going to be 4. But let's find an algebraic way of getting there. Now in this particular case, uh, what we're noticing is there is brackets, so we're going to do the brackets last. So what we want to do the opposite of first is we want to do the opposite of that 3. And you need to understand here that this is actually implying multiplication. This is saying 3 times a number minus 2 is equal to 6. So the opposite, so let's go ahead and set this up, is let's put a line down. To eliminate or do the opposite of that 3 is to do what? It is to divide by 3, because the opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. So if we divide by 3, those opposites, the multiplying and dividing by 3, cancel out, and we are left with just x minus 2. And because they're the remaining brackets, you don't even have to draw the brackets anymore. They're the only thing left is equal to 2. And in this case, now we can do the opposite of the subtracting 2, because that's what we would like to undo. So to undo the subtracting 2, we would add 2. And just like I told you, as you're seeing in the answer here, the answer is absolutely 4. So x equals 2 plus 2, which is 4. Now you may want to think what you're going to do in this next question. Uh, in this particular case, <clears throat> I know that the answer is going to be negative 14. Uh, and that's because negative 14 plus 9, if you look in the brackets, is negative 5. And negative 2 times negative 5 is 10. So the answer is going to be negative 14. But let's focus on how we're going to do this with opposite operations. So in order to do this, we want to do the brackets last. So we're not going to do the opposite of the adding 9 in this case because it's inside the brackets. We are going to do the opposite of this here. Now you want to ask yourself, is the opposite of that going to be adding 2 or dividing by negative 2? And because the operation here is multiplication right with the brackets, uh, what we're going to do is the opposite of multiplication. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So divide by negative 2 is what undoes that multiplying by negative 2. And now we have just the brackets, which is r plus 9. And this is equal to negative 5. Okay? And now what we need to do is the opposite of the adding 9. And the opposite of adding 9 is subtracting 9. Okay? So your final solution here is r equals and negative 5 minus 9 is negative 14. All right, let's look at how to solve this exact same equation. So this equation here, 3 times x minus 2 equals 6 with algebra tiles. We know the answer is going to be 4. So what this actually means, kind of point this out to you, uh, with the brackets, we want to represent the entire brackets three times. So what this means here, I'll point to it, this side means three groups of, and that's x minus 2. So it's not just three groups of x, it's three groups of x minus 2. So if I'm to show you what this looks like with algebra tiles, and again, you may want to pause this and sketch it down. Uh, the first thing I'm noticing here is here's a group of, I think you'd agree, there's a group of x minus 2. Okay? Now ask yourself, what does this actually mean? We want three groups of x minus 2. So not just three groups of x, 
but three groups of x minus 2. So in order to add that, uh, here's what three groups of x minus 2 looks like, right there. And here's what the equation completely is. Okay, if you're going to uh, draw this with algebra tiles, this is what it would look like. This is three groups of x minus 2, and this is equals, and this is positive 6. So if you're sketching that out, hopefully that makes some sense to you. And that's very different than 3x minus 2 without brackets, right? That wouldn't include these four here, okay? But with the brackets, it's three groups of the entire x minus 2. Now, when you look at this question, what we want to do is, again, isolate the rectangles or the x values. So what we'd like to do is eliminate those six white squares. And in order to do that, we're going to have to uh, eliminate them or do the opposite of them in order to do that. So we are going to add six shaded squares. And it looks like I don't have enough here. But I'm going to add six shaded squares to each side. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate some of these. So I added six to the left side, and I'm going to, just one second, I'm going to add six to the right side. Okay. Now what we can do is cancel out all the opposites because opposite operations undo each other. So these six white squares eliminate with these six shaded squares. And now if you look at the groupings, we know that every single one rectangle is equal to a group of four shaded squares. So since these are all positive, our answer is each x is equal to four. And we knew that was going to be the answer. Okay, uh, the last thing we're going to do and uh, this isn't a method that you have to use. There's, there's also something called the distributive property, and I'll show you how it works here. Uh, the distributive property is a property that says before you start these equations, another way to do this, so again, if you understood the previous part of the lesson, you don't necessarily have to do it this way at all. But if, if you'd like to do these problems, you can also get rid of uh, the brackets before starting the algebra. So what it means is that a times x plus b so an is a groups of x and also a groups of b, right? As you can see with this question, we had three groups of x. So up here, we had three groups of x and three groups of negative 2. So let's think about what that actually means. And we're going to again solve the exact same question just using a different method. So uh, this question here, we know the answer is going to be 4, OK? Um, but what we're going to do is use something called, again, the distributive property first. So the distributive property says, okay, let's not start with opposite operations. Let's think about what these groups mean. So I want three groups of x. And you're generally going to kind of see it this way. So three groups of x is three x's. But we also need three groups of negative 2. And three groups of negative 2 is what? Well, it's negative 6. So what you're seeing is that's why we up here had three groups of negative 2. That's equivalent to negative 6. And this is equal to 6. Okay, so we just represented this exact same equation uh, without brackets by using the distributive property. So three groups of x and three groups of negative 2. So we can just solve this as a normal uh, way that we've solved previously. Now there's no brackets, so you can think this is more like your previous section or the previous way that we did algebra. We want to do the opposite of adding and subtracting first. So if we add 6, those will eliminate each other or undo each other. And now we have 3x is equal to 12. And then to do the opposite of multiplying by 3, we would divide by 3. And we, in this case now, have x equals 4. So same solution, just using the distributive property. OK? So uh, that's it for the lesson. However, what we're going to do is look at a word problem here and how it relates to this particular section, um, because word problems will come up frequently when you're solving equations. So don't write what's in this box, but you may want to pay attention a little bit. Um, so it says, Mr. Martins has a square flower bed that wants and wants to increase the length of each side by 15 centimeters. So he's got this square flower box, and he wants to extend each side by 15 centimeters. OK? <clears throat> so uh, the perimeter of his new flower bed will be 360 centimeters. Let x represent the length of the original flower bed. What equation models this situation? So 
if my original flower bed was x, so all of these were originally x, and I'm increasing them all by 15, what you'll notice here is I need to now increase all of these sides by 15. Okay? And it says the perimeter of my new flower bed is 360. So perimeter is the distance around my flower bed. And what you're noticing here is my new flower bed is going to be four groups of x plus 15. So that perimeter, four groups of x plus 15, is equal to the new perimeter of 360. Okay, so you can see how this equation is, us is used in this section because we're using brackets here. It's four sides that are all x plus 15. So now what we can do is the second part says to the determine the length of each side of the original flower bed, which is determine essentially x was the original flower bed. So if we can solve for x, which we have learned how to do, we're done this particular question. So if you recall, the first thing we're going to do, and I'm not going to use the distributive property, I'm going to use the opposite operations right away. So we'd like to do the opposite of that multiplying by 4, which is dividing by 4, because we do the opposite of brackets last. So now we have x plus 15 is equivalent to 90, and then we're finally going to subtract 15, because that's the opposite of adding 15, and our solution here is that x equals 75. So the original length of each side was 75 centimeters. Okay?